Broadcasting from the Tazan Lake Lodge Studio. This is Sporting Journal Radio. <laughs> Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. Now here's your host, Brett Amundsen. That's right. Welcome to the show. Dan Amundsen with us as always here. Dan, how's it going? Real good. How are you? Got a big show this week. Uh, Tony Roach is going to join us, and he's going to talk about fishing on Mille Lacs. Dan, you and I both, neither one of us have been on Mille Lacs for a while, and all of a sudden we saw that, that the two-week closure was about to come to an end. We're like, oh gosh, we, sh- we should probably talk about Mille Lacs yeah. and talk about regulations and how fishing has been, and it's been a real hot summer. So I'm going to talk to Tony. We're going to ask him uh, about how he fishes for walleyes this time of of year, like when you get real hot temperatures, do you fish them shallower? Do you avoid fishing fishing them deep? Obviously, hook mortality is a big deal anywhere, but obviously something that's been well documented on Mille Lacs. We're going to ask him about hot summer walleye fishing. We've also got uh, Eric Osberg is going to be on the show. We're going to talk bass fishing with Eric this week. He has got a secret technique for catching bass when he's out fishing with his kid out there and what he does in the back of the boat uh, and how he complements uh, Willie's fan casting for bass out in the bow. And then uh, Joe Henry also has a secret tip for us. I think we, I think I kind of knew the tip a little bit, but then he kind of spills the beans about some of his uh, tournament techniques that he doesn't like to talk about uh, on catching walleyes this time of year in the summer. And Dan, uh, who is sponsoring this week's show? Yeah, Lake of the Woods Tourism. Go ahead and plan a trip to Lake of the Woods at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. Otter Tail Lakes Country, find your inner otter at ottertaillakescountry.com. Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort on Devil's Lake in North Dakota. Plan a trip to Devil's Lake at haybaleheights.com. And Onyx Maps, know where you stand with Onyx and our favorite TV show, Prairie Sportsman. Watch episodes anytime at prairiesportsman.org. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to, uh, to this show on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Follow us, uh, smash that, uh, what do they say, smash that subscribe button or that notification. Hit the notification if you're watching this on YouTube. If you like it, please comment too if you have some secret techniques that you're not uh, afraid to share with our viewers slash listeners. Please comment, uh, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. That also helps us in the algorithms and all that helps us get the messages out even more. And, uh, of course, uh, listen to us on the radio. If you listen to us on this radio show right here, thank you very much. Thank you, radio station. Tell your friends to tune in this time each week on uh, this radio show right here. And don't forget, you can get some really cool Sporting Journal radio swag from hats, hoodies, T-shirts, and more. Some really cool mugs and tumblers at the Sporting Journal radio store. You can find that at SportingJournalRadio.com. That's what it looks like right there. Got some North American waterfowl gear. That's a new podcast that's going to be coming soon here from this show. Also, uh, it's also a video show too. You can find that at NorthAmericanWaterfowl.com. And Dan has been uh, sending out the newsletter here for us uh, that you can sign up for, the SJR Insider at SportingJournalRadio.com. And Dan, if people sign up, for that newsletter and get that email to their inbox each week. What are they going to, what are they going to get in that newsletter, Dan? So you're going to get uh, some segment snippets from last week's show or whatever. If there were some cool tips that some of our, our friends of the show gave us, I like to highlight those and, and give you some tips to make you a better fisherman, hunter, whatever. So, you know, last week we had Garrett Sphere on talking, talking crappies, trolling for crappies. So we've, we've got that in there. Um, then some other news like that Mille Lacs stuff. I was looking around for some news. That's how we found out about the, the whole Mille Lacs deal. So some news going around, uh, burning restrictions, some, some stuff like that. And just anything that catches my eye, really, that I think might be interesting, um, we'll throw it in there. I like to have pictures of, of you guys. I want you guys to send us our, your pictures. If you caught a big fish, if you, you know come fall, you shoot a big deer, you see something cool in your trail cams this summer, whatever you're up to, we want to see it. Uh, we want to highlight it. So go ahead and send us those pictures. Uh, but sportingjournalradio.com or DM us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, wherever we can get those. And I'd like to show those off to everybody. You'll also get a code in there to save 25% off the Sporting Journal Radio store. So sign up today at the SJR Insider at sportingjournalradio.com. Dan, you and uh, your dad, my brother Wade, uh, did some fishing around the Twin Cities Metro here this week, didn't you? Yeah, I'm uh, in the cities for a bit, and uh, when you're here, you, you, I get antsy, and so I've got to go fishing, and we've got 
two fantastic rivers to fish right out our backyard here, the Mississippi and the St. Croix. <clears throat> and the Minnesota. Both, uh, there's three. And of them. the Minnesota. There's three, three of them. Yeah. It, the Minnesota is really easy to forget about, but yeah. uh, there's giant, giant fish in the Minnesota as well. Um, but giant walleyes in Mississippi and the St. Croix and sturgeon catfish. There's just huge fish. You never know what you're going to catch in the, in the St. Croix or any of them. And that's what makes it so much fun. Um, and quite frankly, it's pretty for kind of forget you're in the Metro when you're down there. Um, but yeah, we've, we've taken, I've been down there a couple times now. Um, the water is really, really, really low. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's making fishing a little bit tough. You know, you don't have that current normally, normally where we like to fish, if we're just floating downstream, you're moving at like a mile and a half an hour. And I think on Saturday I was, I was moving at like 0.6 miles an hour. And if there was a wind coming up current, I wasn't moving. I was mm -hmm. at a complete standstill, which is unheard of. Um, there's trees out of the water that I normally I'm getting snagged on. You know, you can see normally these trees right here, if you're watching or you're listening on the radio, go to the YouTube, YouTube page to, to watch the, those videos. Um, those trees normally I'm getting snagged up on They're in like 10 to 14 feet of water. You can run your boat over them. I'm sure there's thousands of lures on those things. Yeah. Thought about sneaking in there and trying to, trying to get some lures For or whatever, sure. but, uh, um, <laughs> It's kind of wild how much how how shallow that water is and how we need some rain. Bottom line, we need rain, and it's making fishing tough because fish are getting concentrated. Um, but but they're there. Uh, a lot of drum. You know, Corey Loeffler <laughs> mentioned needing drum, and uh, there's there's drum there. If you if Corey, if you need to catch a drum, go to the river. There's plenty of them. I promise. Was that by um, the Kinney also, there? That video. That was yep yeah. up by the Kinney Connect. Kinney Connect. Um, so, I like to fish up there a little bit. But I, I think Darren Troseth cool. on Facebook shared a picture, an aerial shot of that, that he, I don't know where he got it from, but I think he shared that in one of the fishing groups or something the other day. And it, it was an aerial shot of that. And all you saw, yeah, were, were logs and sticks and branches and whatever sticking out of the water there. But you talk about those, those metro area rivers. And speaking of Darren, actually, I just shared a Prairie Sportsman segment on the Prairie Sportsman Facebook page of fishing the Minnesota River with Darren around the metro there for some of those river monsters and uh, the big giant flatheads and then he you can see also him catching that record state record sturgeon that he caught on the st croix you can mm -hmm. see all of that in that segment from prairie sportsman available now and of course i'm a little parcel to minnesota i'm a western minnesota uh you know that's where i live now so i'm kind of parcel to that that muddy river that uh, that flows into the twin cities there and there's big walleyes in that river too but uh you know that, i don't i'm not a big river guy in general and uh, that is one thing. If you live in the metro, yeah, there are some lakes that you can fish. They kind of get hammered. Um, you almost have to go fish those rivers, but those rivers can be can be really good fishing there as uh, as well. And Dan, what I'm really excited about though is next week we're going up to Lake of the Woods to do some fishing up there with the family. It's our annual family trip, and we're going to be filming a couple episodes of Prairie Sportsman while we're up there too. So this this show next week will be coming from Arneson's. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about Lake of the Woods, but we'll also have Hank Shaw on. Hank Shaw is in the Twin Cities uh, this weekend on his book tour. So we're going to talk to him about how his, uh, how his time here in Minnesota has gone, how the new book sales have been going, uh, hunt, 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 gather, Gosh, I should have looked this up before we started talking about it. But if you Google Hank Shaw and his cook, he's got some amazing recipes uh, for wild game cooking. Uh, check him out. He'll be on the show here uh, next week. And, Dan, I was in the driveway the other day, and uh, I'm getting the boat ready for Lake, for the Lake of the Woods trip. So I'm, I'm yep. kind of rigging rods, and I'm, I'm organizing anchor ropes and whatever, just, you know, doing boat stuff in the driveway boat like stuff. you have to do every day before a trip like this and i hear this weird buzzing above me and i'm you know in this time of year there's so many big bugs and critters and birds and whatever winging around you don't know what it what it might be so i hear it for a little bit don't really care and then finally I look up and it's a hummingbird which i i don't care who you are hummingbirds are cool and I've, I've tried to make it a mission of mine to get really good photos of a hummingbird because it's not easy. And any good photos I've taken have generally been at a hummingbird feeder, which it's, it's, they're just not the best photos when you're taking them, you know, taking pictures at, at feeders like that. So I immediately go to grab my camera and I realize that there's a, there's a branch hanging over my driveway that's got this tiny little nest in it. And that's where this hummingbird was. So she's got a nest right above me in the driveway. And I thought it was way cool. And in matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, 
I have a video and it looks something like this. All right, so this nest, oh, she's in the nest right now. I'm gonna put it on a pole and climb this ladder. I don't wanna get too close to her, but if I do this, she won't mind it so much. After she flew out, it gave me a quick chance to get a closer look at the nest and see what's inside. Without spending too much time there, it looked like the nest held two young hummingbird chicks. She didn't go too far away, keeping a close eye on me the whole time, and soon returned to the nest. Now, if you're watching this video, <laughs> you're seeing some really, look at that tongue, Dan. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's looks wicked. like it, it. You don't ever get to see that. Right. So we're, you're learning about the size of the hummingbird nest and incubation and all that and just seeing, and there's some very dramatic music <laughs> playing along with it, but it is a really cool experience. Seeing this hummingbird nest in my driveway. Yeah. In a lot of places. So is this, uh, is this where the fishing electronics come from? They get, they hatch in those nests and, <laughs> and you put them on your boat. Is that how it works? I, I probably. You okay, just take, yeah. I think that's hummingbird though, and not humming. Oh, yeah, bird. you're right. So, but you know, <laughs> close enough. But uh, so you can see that video if you if you missed it, you can watch this on the Sporting Journal Radio Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube. You'll be able to see that video on there. Uh, otherwise, you got to hear it. But a hummingbird nest, it's only it's hard to tell in that video, Dan. But the nest is only about two inches across and an inch deep. And there's essentially three birds sitting in that. And that just shows you just how small those fish are. Wow. Those fish, yeah. <laughs> those birds. <laughs> I started thinking about what we're going to talk about next, which is uh, uh, real quick. I'm not going to play this whole video, but uh, um, some friends of ours from Saskatchewan at Tazan Lake. Uh, he's now owner of Camp Grayling as well in Stony Rapids. And they got so many cool opportunities. If you want to fish for grayling up there, they got grayling. They got 50-inch pike. They got big walleyes. They got big lake trout. And they did some fly fishing for walleyes. Have you ever heard of that before, Dan? I have, but it's very rare. It's always someone around here. Then It's like some old local that's fly fishing for walleyes. And it's hard to believe, but, man, it's legit. Here it. is some of that video footage from Camp Grayling in Saskatchewan. Catch the Grand Slam at Camp Grayling. All right, so again, if you're listening to this on the radio, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um, kind of give you the play by play. But if you're watching it on one of our video platforms, here is the fly fishing for walleyes. It's pretty wicked. Heck of a hook set. Gotta love it. Northern Saskatchewan walleyes. Beautiful. On the fly rod, a couple feet of water. Boom. Double header. Look at his. Oh, yeah. Very beaut. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty cool. Check them out at fishcampgrailing.com. Fishcampgrailing.com. And hopefully that border opens so we can get up there. They're open now for Canadians. Uh, Tazan Lake Lodge obviously is not because the majority of the, their clientele is, is U.S. based. But if the border opens, hopefully by the time this is airing, we're hearing more details about the border being open. But I, I don't know. If the border opens, get up to northern Saskatchewan. You will not be disappointed. Uh, if you can't, you can go to Lake of the Woods like we are next week. Right, Dan? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good second option. It's a pretty good first option for a fishing trip. Uh, and yeah, I cannot wait. I'm, I'm itching, itching and to, to go. To tell us more about what we can expect up there, here comes Joe Henry in just a second. On X Hunt, ever heard of it? Next time you see that guy at your local shop who always punches his tag on a stud whitetail, ask him. He'll tell you about the most trusted source for mapping with nationwide landowner names, private and public land boundaries, including walk-in areas, map tools to mark spots, and the ability to view your maps without cell service. And that's just scratching the surface. It's your time to be known as the big buck guy around town. Download the leader in hunt mapping on Google Play or the App Store. On X Hunt, know where you stay.
Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts.